Every day we make decisions, big and small. Should I continue to pay my mortgage and keep my house? Should I um, try and find a different job and do a different career? Small decisions like, it's raining today, do I really need to go to the grocery store? Or can we find something to eat that's already in the pantry or refrigerator? Every day we make decisions, big and small decisions. But when it comes to the Bible, we need to remember the decision has already been made. And it's not up to us. Today we're gonna to have a bonus lesson. I've been thinking about this for a while. We're gonna do a bonus lesson that goes over the scriptures about singing. We've been working, now we're on the second book of Singing with the Understanding, and we've been working on lessons and learning and studying from our Bibles of singing with the understanding. The hymns that we do sing in worship, let's make sure that we understand what they're teaching. But I thought, let's do a lesson, again, it's been a long time, let's do a lesson talking, I mean, going over those scriptures that are in our Bibles of why we sing in worship and make sure that we know those scriptures and we're doing things correctly. So, I'm Catrice Howard. This is the New Hope Road Ladies Bible Class. This is a bonus lesson today, and please have your Bible, and let's study together about the commands to sing. Now, like I said, with Bible matters, with things about the Bible, the decision has been made. It is up to us to learn and obey. God has made things simple. It's mankind that makes things difficult. And they try and uh, justify what they want to do and they'll twist the scriptures. But if we want to be obedient to God, we need to follow his word and keep it simple. And everything is here for our learning. And it is not hard to understand, and the Bible tells us that. So uh, let's, let's talk about how we can get into a um, spectator mode sometimes. Not everybody, but sometimes maybe new Christians or those that have not obeyed the gospel, can get into a spectator mode when you come to an assembly. You're sitting in an auditorium and you're watching what's happening up front, whether it's the song leader or someone leading a prayer, the Lord's Supper, the one preaching, and we need to be careful not, in, not to get into that spectator mode of, I'm here, I'm just, this is being done for me, as though, as though almost it's entertainment. Worship is not a spectator sport. Worship is actively, each one actively participating actively with your mind, with your heart, participating in worship to God. And that's one thing that everybody needs to be careful of and mindful of. And um, let's start looking in our Bibles. And let me say that what we're going over today, I am not by any means saying, I'm perfect at anything. You know, YouTube is used a lot for things that you can learn, things that are fun to watch. 
you know, you have people on YouTube that teach you cooking, that show you things you can improve in your home, decorating, or things outside in the garden you can improve. They, they do travel logs. There's all kinds of things you can see on YouTube. A lot of it good. And that's why New Hope Road wanted to use YouTube to get the gospel message out and the, the lessons, the preaching, the Bible classes. And here, this lady's Bible class, we, we are using it to further the message, further the Bible message, and, and be able to reach more people. But please understand, I, I do not do this to try and say, I'm, I've got it all down, and you need to just listen to me. I constantly encourage you, have your Bibles. Let's look at this together. Maybe you haven't thought about this verse, and let's, let's learn about it some more. So this lesson today is just to remind us, or if someone didn't know, to help them begin to look, look at the scriptures of singing in worship. And this lesson is not going to be specifically on all the acts of worship. We're going to focus on specifically singing. All right. Let's first look at 1 Corinthians. Um, now, chapter 1 Corinthians, chapters 13 and 14, is Paul talking to the congregation in Corinth about spiritual gifts, and how things need to be done in an assembly setting and those that have been given spiritual gifts. So let's first, let's first read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I, also, I will also pray with the understanding I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. And he, he has been talking about the spiritual gifts that they have, and that everybody can't do everything all at once. It has to be done where it can be understood. It would not be helpful it would not be edifying if you have 15 people at once leading a prayer, you would not be able to follow. If you had 10 people prophesying at the same time, it would not be understood. So that is what he is saying. What is the conclusion? We are to pray with the Spirit and with the understanding. We are to sing with the spirit and with the understanding or it's not edifying let's also look at same chapter chapter 14 and let's read verse 40. so after he talks about all of this how things are to are to be done in the assembly how when the church comes together how things are to be done in verse 40 he says let all things be done decently and in order. And that's so very important. He's been going over in these chapters, what we call chapters. He's been reviewing how those that have those gifts need to use them correctly. And in the assemblies, they need to be used where it is edifying and helpful to others. Now, of course, since I brought up these chapters about spiritual gifts, let's also make sure we understand. Let's go back to chapter 13 and let's read chapter 10. I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 13, verse number 10. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. So that which is perfect or complete 
has come. And that is talking about the Word, the whole part of God's Word, the whole completed Word, which we have. We have this completed Bible, the whole revelation, Old Testament, New Testament. It is all here for us now. Then that which was in part shall be done away. And he is speaking of those spiritual gifts that they had, which was to help establish things. And when it is all done, what is perfect and complete has come, that which is in part will be done away. So there are no spiritual gifts today. There are no members that speak in tongues, which means another language they did not study. There is no need for that. We have the completed Bible. There is no prophecy. There is no need for that because we have the completed Bible. So those, those spiritual gifts are done away. Now, let's go over those verses specifically talking about singing. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 19 and 20. Ephesians 5, starting in verse 19. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here is one of the commandments. It is a commandment to sing. When we come together, one of the things we are to do is to sing. And as, as I said earlier, worship is an active, participating thing we are to do. We are to sing. And we've talked about this before in the class. Not everybody thinks they're a great singer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're given a voice. You want to worship God. You are to sing. And that doesn't mean you have to sing at the loudest pitch, the loudest tone, but you are to sing. And we are to sing thinking about those words that we are singing. Not sing mindlessly, but think about what we are singing. And we are speaking to one another. Now, here it doesn't say that we're playing an instrument with one another. We are speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing. So, if it were that mechanical instruments were authorized in the New Testament, which they are not, but if they were, everyone would need to have an instrument. And it would specifically need to be a stringed instrument. But that is not what is commanded of us. It is to sing. Because we have voices God has given us, and we are to sing to the best of our ability and with the right attitude and heart and mind. So there is our first one where we are commanded to sing. Now let's also review Colossians chapter 3, the book of Colossians chapter 3, and let's read verses 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts 
to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Again, we are taught, we are taught psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, singing. We are to sing. And singing is with words, not humming, not throat voice noise. If it's not a word, we are to use words, not clapping. If we are to teach and admonish one another, then you use words to do that, to teach and to admonish. You can't do it in other ways of humming or, or throat noises or anything like that. Trying to make the, the sound of an instrument. Sometimes that can be done sometimes in, in uh, possibly of denominations and some denominations. That is not what we are called to do. We are to teach and admonish by our singing. So that is with the words in the hymns, the psalms, the hymns, the spiritual songs. And we are to do all of this by the authority of Jesus. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. It is by his authority. He has been given all authority, Matthew 28. It teaches us that all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. So Ephesians chapter 5, Colossians chapter 3, both are commands for us to sing. Let's also look at the book of John and let's look at Jesus speaking to the Samaritan woman and what he says about worship. John chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 23 and 24. John chapter 4, verse 23. He's been speaking to the Samaritan woman, and he's getting her to understand what worship is. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now, what does that mean, spirit and in truth? Spirit means if we are to worship in spirit, we are to be worshiping with the right attitude, the right mind, that we are being mindful of what we are doing, and we have the right attitude that is taught in the New Testament. And worshiping in truth is we are following the commandments that are laid down in the New Testament that we are to do. We are following God's commands, and it's not our own. It is not up to us to change anything. Like at the beginning, with Bible Matters, the decision has been made. The decision has been made. I don't need to try and change anything. It is not up to me. I need to accept the Bible and follow God's Word. And we have said before, this Bible, you can think of it. If you're a student, this is your textbook. If you're a member of a nation or a member of a kingdom, these are the laws that you follow. If you're on a path looking for something, this is your guidebook. That's how we should see the Bible. This is what we need to make it through this life and to be pleasing to God and most importantly 
to do what we are commanded to do to have a home in heaven and that's the main thing you know the the lessons that are put on the website are given to help others learn Bible it's great to learn new recipes and craft ideas and decorating and finding travel in other countries those are all wonderful things and I enjoy watching them too but we do these lessons to try and show others what the Bible says what the Bible teaches us and how important it is how important it is that we follow what the Bible says that's the most important thing that we're following the Bible and we're being pleasing to God so if anybody has any questions if I didn't make something clear about the verses that we went over on singing let me know because I want to to be clear every everyone that teaches at New Hope Road William and Bob and Charles we all want to have a lesson that is understood and if there's any questions please let us know that by email however you can let us know if you have a question about something so we're clear on everything that is important and I encourage you to follow to keep following along in your Bible and we'll do another lesson next time on the book singing with the understanding because that is so important that when we are singing we understand and we're teaching each other and admonishing what the song is saying so thank you for being with me today and I ask that you please not just my lessons not just the ladies Bible class lessons but all of the lessons that are on the website on the YouTube channel please share them with others especially those that don't understand the Bible and maybe they might be willing to watch a short lesson please share with others so we can get the truth out there and I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you for spending a little bit of time with me.